In this video, I'm going to show you how I animated this design using cell animation. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shot. This will be a process breakdown, not a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you want to dig deeper into any particular technique, you can view the full screen recording. It's 30 hours split over three videos. That's right, 30 hours. I don't do cell animation very often, and I'm incredibly slow. Someone who isn't slow is my sound designer, Gordy. He stepped in at the last minute to replace someone who dropped out and did an incredible job bringing my animation to life. You'll hear that later when we look at the animation, but in the meantime, you can look him up here on LinkedIn. Full disclosure, even though I've said that this is a cell animation breakdown, and I have done this style before, this is more about me ineptly trying to find my feet. I'd honestly go elsewhere if you want professional tips. But stay tuned if you want to hear me talk about the different techniques I used to bring this design to life and some of the things that I struggled with. Okay, let's get started. This was for a collaboration organized by Mark Lawrence. Oh, hi, Mark. The theme was mid-century modern graphic design. I was assigned this design by Paul Rand for the Container Corporation of America. Mark sourced the designs from this book by Theo Inglis. We'll look at the finished animation shortly, but first, let's look at how I came up with the concept. I started off by researching Paul Rand, who I'm embarrassed to say I wasn't familiar with, and, perhaps lazily, I asked AI to interpret the design for me. Google told me the design featured a colourful bird with geometric shapes for its wings and tail. Um, are you sure? Because I'm not seeing it. Are you seeing it? Maybe your eyes are better than mine. I was convinced it was the hand from the Statue of Liberty. It's the 48 states of America, light in the road, seems to make sense. Perhaps there's a dove in here as well? Possibly? Like I say, I'm not seeing it. But it did give me an idea. We've got the hand holding the torch, and if we start with a dove being released, we could have two transitions. The bird's wings become the flames, and one of the hands moves down to grasp the torch. I toyed with the idea of bringing a map of the United States into the mix, but I thought that might be over egg in the pudding. And besides, Rand was all about simplicity. I briefly considered using 3D models for the hands, but figured it was probably easier to just film myself. So after rapidly setting up a state-of-the-art studio in my office, I was ready to go. The idea was to get a rough timing from a bird release to grabbing the torch. This could always be time remapped in After Effects, since it was going to look hand-drawn anyway. My plan was to do the dove in Photoshop, but animate the hands using shape layers in After Effects. I've done this previously and it worked out okay. Unfortunately, my older brother had recently killed my beloved Kestrel, so I had to use stock footage for the bird. Actually, semi-serious point, if you're a beginner, using reference for cell animation is very common and it's obviously very easy to film yourself. But for anything that's a bit harder to film, then stock footage is a good option. I used Motion Array for the footage. Full disclosure, they reached out to ask if I'd be interested in partnering with them. So I said, well, I need some footage of doves, or a single dove, can you hook me up? They said, yes, of course, here you go. I said, hold on, those are clearly pigeons. They said, oh, we're terribly sorry. Sometimes the labeling of some of our videos isn't totally accurate. Here, try this one. I said, look, you can't try to rebrand pigeons as city doves. That's not a thing. I mean, what next? I think at this point, everyone realized that A, I was being a bit pedantic, and B, in silhouette, a pigeon could look like a dove. Either way, from now on, I'm gonna absolutely insist on calling pigeons city doves. So I've got hands and footage of a city dove. I rotoscoped the footage, then roughly comped the two elements together. Then I did a crude animatic to get an idea of the timing. Next, I traced over the artwork with shape layers, then used my footage as reference to animate the hand grasping the torch. I wanted to keep the simple, clean look of the artwork, so I used this look as a style guide for the hands at the beginning. Even though the city dove was shot in slow motion, I used runway to slow it down even more. The result wasn't perfect, but I could use Photoshop to fix any issues, and I might not need those problem frames anyway. I brought the runway footage into After Effects, and then created a second animatic, exported this at 6 frames a second, and then brought it into Photoshop as a video layer. Since the bird wasn't in shot the whole time, I used generative fill to remove any cropping. Animating in Photoshop is where my experience really shines. Lots of drawing a line, no, that's not quite right, undo, try again, repeat. I've got a standard Wacom tablet, so in future, if I do more cell animation, I might upgrade so I can draw directly onto a screen. I used smoothing, but this was still a long, time-consuming process. I gathered some reference for how the bird could look, with varying degrees of complexity, and tried different brush options. After struggling with Windows Ink to get my pen pressure to work, I settled on a simple tapered brush. I went with a very loose approach to tracing the bird. This was my attempt to keep the animation time down. Once that was done, I brought it into After Effects. By the way, make sure you don't have any video reference layers in your file before you import into After Effects. 
Then I animated placeholder flames and roughly cobbled everything together to see how it's looking so far. I then redid the bird with a thinner brush and more careful drawing style. I wasn't sure if I wanted the bird just outlined or filled and did another animatic with the updated brush. But I kept coming back to the design and wanting to keep things simple. So I decided to keep the look of the bird the same as the hands, which meant drawing it again. I would have saved a lot of time settling on the look first, but I don't need to tell you that. Anyway, I ended up drawing the sodding bird three times and ended up with this animation. To animate the flickering of flames, I experimented with turbulent displace and mesh warp. My attempt wasn't great though. I ended up bringing in a clip of an actual flame and tracing over that. I used this for the small flames, using the same shape layer and resolve into each of the two flame shapes with slightly different timing. The larger flames I started in Photoshop, then did the very last part in After Effects. And the edges of the flames I matted off with this flickering rough and edges shape to match the artwork. Well, that gets lost in the final animation, the way that I comped it, but we'll get to that later. As I talked about previously with this breakdown, one of the things I like about collaborations is the accountability. You're far more likely to get the work done than a personal project that you've set yourself, but it helps if you have good time management skills, which I don't. Well, certainly not with unpaid collabs, just in case any clients are watching. So anyway, due to forgetting when the deadline was, I found myself scrambling to finish this almost overnight before it had to be submitted. Mark gave me a hard deadline of 9am, so the day before I really had to hustle. This is the sort of time frame where you don't want complicated bespoke transitions. We all know what match cuts are and why they're great. They can save a lot of time and pain, particularly if you have a client prone to making last minute changes. As you can see, doing this bespoke transition took a while. It was fiddly and I was jumping between Photoshop and After Effects trying to figure out the best workflow. Well, I didn't figure out the best workflow, but I stumbled on a workflow. <laughs> I had the tail of the bird transition into the torch and apart from a bit of cleanup, the timing and animation of the hands was there. Since the theme of the artwork was light in the road, I thought it'd be impactful going from black to white. I start the animation on black, well, not black, more like dark brown, but start on black so that when the flames appear, they illuminate the screen and take us from black to white. But by the end of the day, I'd only got to here. I needed to resolve to the artwork elements, and I had 12 hours to do it. It probably wasn't a good idea to have a few drinks that evening. I was quite happy after a couple, seeing how this had come together, and I kind of felt like I was in the zone. Cut to several hours later, and I've run out of Lefe, and I'm pouring myself generous measures of gin and tonic, squinting at the screen. It's not exactly a great headspace for astute creative decisions. Hence this hacky, rushed end transition. I ended up ineptly mixing between this comp and this comp, and then the final artwork. You'll see I ended up reusing this mat to comp everything together, this was a desperate last minute solution to go from my animation into the final artwork seamlessly. Spoiler alert, it's far from seamless, actually a bit of a mess. Speaking of which, the grade is a bit of a mess as well. I wanted to emulate the simple hand drawn look of the design, but I also wanted the hands to stand out, so I did a subtle glow. It looked too clean, so I blurred it. I don't even remember adding this adjustment layer. Almost too much blur here, to be honest. Then the boil is really basic turbulent displace on an adjustment layer. This probably gets lost with the YouTube compression, but I pre-rendered the grain as the previous were taking forever, and it was like 3, 4 a.m. at this point. So that's essentially it. This is the final animation. I have to say, I think Gordy did an amazing job with the sound design. The vibe at the start is kind of dark and moody, then when it transitions into the flames and the lights, it's uplifting. You really nailed it. As for the animation though, while I still like the core idea, there's things I'm not happy with. Firstly, obvious mistakes. No excuse for missing this. Then, how has this bird been held exactly? No, don't think about it, just accept it. Some of the drawn frames aren't great, and rewatching it is actually quite slow. I think speeding it up just a little bit, it maybe works better. So the torch and the flames actually look quite pretty with the hacky glow, but you lose that with this basic transition, so that's a bit of a shame. Instead, there's this ugly gray 
and then there's Ghost in where it mixes between the different comps. And this, not great. I'd like to have animated the text and other elements somehow, even something basic. I think I could have done something with this. I guess it alludes to a star of the Stars and Stripes, maybe. And then lastly, after all that bloody work, it just ends up looking like someone lighting their own fire. <laughs> so, hot tip for everyone. If you're going to spend 30 hours animating something, maybe do a quick check and make sure there isn't, say, an accidental swap sticker or something. Anyway, hope this was useful. If you'd like the free project file, there's a link in the description below. Thanks again to Mark for organising the collab. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.